June 17th, a young woman's body is found in a North Houston Creek by a woman just passing by, and that discovery has ignited a firestorm. We now know the body was that of 12 year old Jocelyn Nungri. And the two men accused of killing her crossed the border illegally just days before she was murdered. But this story starts with the manhunt. I've spoken to her mother. She's devastated, actually holding out hope that it's not her daughter, which I'll let the lieutenant address the circumstances. I will say it makes me angry that we have dangerous criminals on the streets of Houston. Too often we rearrest repeat violent offenders, but we won't rest. And this is an example of why public safety will continue to be our highest priority. We believe somebody did this horrible thing to her and we are here to ask for your help to find out if anybody knows anything, anybody saw anything, and anybody can share that information so we can figure out what happened to her exactly and we can find whoever did this and get them off the street. Reporter Jonathan Mejia spoke with a woman who found Jocelyn's body while our Randy Wallace spoke with her grieving mother. Horrifying. It was scary. Uh, being from a small town and then nothing like this ever happens, finding that, it's, it scared me being a mother and a grandmother. Houston police are investigating the death of a 12-year-old girl whose body was found near West Rankin Road, just west of the North Freeway, not too far from where she lived. How can somebody do this? How can somebody leave someone laying there? Uh, it's not something you expect to see anywhere. Listening to the radio while driving her husband to work is a part of Jackson's routine, but Monday morning it changed forever. He said, okay, it's time to call in. 6:15, and it just—I just instantly lost it. She says that's the moment she saw the body. Investigators tell us the girl left her home without her parents knowing. Mother last saw her daughter at 10 o'clock when she put everybody to bed. Sometime between 10 and 12, she left. Authorities say the girl was on the phone with her 13 year old boyfriend who last spoke with her around midnight when she was at a convenience store and the boyfriend heard her talking to two men. Sources tell Fox 26 they saw the girl at the convenience store and later two men walked in. There are violent offenders on our street that uh, we must do something about it. Public safety has to continue to be our, my, our I'll include everyone, our highest priority. Jackson wonders how many people drove past the visible body. She says people should always speak up if they see something and would like people to be respectful to the victim's family. If you see something, give people some closure. Just be respectful and give closure to somebody because everybody deserves it. She was an amazing little girl. Amazing. I was so excited to see the, the woman she was going to turn into. But Jocelyn Nungary will forever be 12 years old. She's gone through a lot these past few couple months, struggling with mental health, um, wanting to take her own life, her being saved. I always knew God had other plans for her. She's meant to be here. She's supposed to be here. Police believe Jocelyn snuck out of her apartment between 10 and midnight Monday night. Her boyfriend reportedly told police he talked to her on the phone around midnight and she was talking to a couple of men in a car at this gas station in the 12,400 block of Kirkendall. Alexis Nungare says she didn't know Jocelyn was gone until Tuesday morning. I looked everywhere, walked around, nothing, and I, I ran, got my car to where her phone pinged, which was right behind the skate park, and there was already cross tape and cops. Jocelyn's body was found in a shallow creek in the 400 block of West Rankin. She had been strangled. My baby didn't deserve this at all. Police released these photos of two men seen at the gas station when Jocelyn was there. They are being called persons of interest. Jocelyn's mom says she doesn't recognize them. They look like individuals that could come out of the apartment complex I live in. It's very um, Latin based and um, they could have came from the skate park. They, uh, there's a lot of crazy people out here and just by looking at them, you never really could know. 
just so heartbreaking. Well, the very next morning after pictures of the two men seen on surveillance video with Jocelyn were released, police made their arrests. Hearing that the gentlemen that were in these surveillance videos, that they have been found and they've been caught and they've been taken in for questioning it, it was like, an, it was the greatest news to hear this morning, to be woken up with. The last few days have been surreal for Alexis Nungari and her family. Her 12-year-old daughter, Jocelyn, was strangled and her body left in the creek. It's just like, still just doesn't register. Just I can't believe it's her. And, um, you know, it's... It'll, it'll take some sinking in. In a multi-division operation led by Houston police, 21-year-old Johan Jose Rangel Martinez and 26-year-old Franklin Jose Peña Ramos, both Venezuelan natives, are now charged with capital murder. Charges have been filed. Now we want the justice system to do its job. If there was ever a circumstance where you do not give someone bail, this is it. Investigators did not go into specifics on how the suspects and Jocelyn met or how Jocelyn died, only offering that those details are still being investigated, but they have submitted for a sexual assault kit to be completed. Suspects seen meeting the victim and talking for a few minutes while they were on Kirkendall. Later, the suspects and the victim walked together to a convenience store. After a few minutes, all three together walked to a bridge where ultimately Jocelyn was murdered. Police say the men have been cooperative, and so has the family of Jocelyn's 13-year-old boyfriend, who was the last to speak to her on the phone. Alexis says if she could have that night back, she would have hugged her daughter and never let go. I would have stayed up with her. I would have just lacked sleep. I would have gave her the biggest hug, biggest hug, and I just probably wouldn't have let go. The suspects are now facing charges of capital murder, one being Johan Jose Rangel Martinez, the second male being Franklin Jose Peña Romos. Photos show homicide detectives arresting Martinez and Peña Romos at the Canfield Lake Apartments on Rush Creek Drive. Three days after 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungary's body was found in a creek at West Rankin Road in North Houston. The first guy jumped through here behind the house and they chased him. They caught him here just outside at the other corner. A neighbor saw the arrest and says he's seen the suspects with a young girl before. She was a young 12-year-old girl who was always around here with a white dog. The guy was from Venezuela. He lived just on the other side. He's talking about Peña Romos. This New York Post article says Department of Homeland Security sources say that he crossed into El Paso illegally on May 28th, but was released with a GPS ankle monitor. It's unknown if that monitor was on when Jocelyn was murdered. We shouldn't be burying our kids. This shouldn't be happening. Houston police released the booking photos of 22-year-old Johan Jose Martinez Rangel and 26-year-old Franklin Jose Peña Ramos. Both men are booked at the Harris County Jail being charged with capital murder, and we have confirmed that both men are from Venezuela and are undocumented. According to court documents, both suspects lured 12-year-old Jocelyn under the bridge where they had her for two hours. They took her pants off, tied her up, and killed her, then threw her body into the creek. According to an ICE spokesperson, Martinez illegally entered the United States at the El Paso border sector on March 14th of this year. He was released the same day with a notice to appear, or an NTA, to appear before an immigration judge in federal court. Such is the case for Peña Ramos, who entered the country illegally on May 28th at the El Paso border sector. He was also released the same day with an NTA. The death of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungari has sparked the debate across the country about the immigration law and policy at the southern border. Here's Jonathan Mejia and the Fox 26 face-off team with that part of the story. The death of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungari has caught the attention of many across the country. Houston police has arrested 22-year-old Johan Martinez and 26-year-old Franklin Peña. Both are from Venezuela and are illegal immigrants. Now they're facing a charge of capital murder. According to ICE, Martinez was apprehended by Border Patrol agents in El Paso on March 14th and was released the same day. For Peña, he was apprehended and released by agents in El Paso on May 28th. These individuals had been apprehended and then released 
That's a broken system, and it leads to tragedies when you have a criminal element. Take the necessary steps to secure our border. Many are calling on President Biden to do more when it comes to changing laws at the border, but only Congress can make immigration reform a reality. We uh, should insist that Congress and administration come up with a fail-proof immigration system. Depending if the person enters lawfully. Alexis Lucero is an immigration attorney from El Paso. He explains that the Department of Homeland Security has two different approaches at the border. One for those that enter legally through the CBP-1 app. Those persons will generally not be subject to a detention uh, process. That means if that person does not have any immigration background, uh, meaning uh, immigration violations or a criminal history, those people who claim fear will be given an opportunity to present those claims to an uh, immigration judge later in the process, and they're provided a humanitarian permit to enter the United States without detention. And for those that enter illegally through the Rio Grande or desert, they have the heaviest consequences and are generally detained and face immediate deportation unless they're able to pass a credible fear interview. But the United States cannot send some nationals back to their country or Mexico. If immigration authorities detain people on the border, in the desert or in the river, that happen to be from countries where the United States has a strained diplomatic relation, or have, has no diplomatic relation, we can't return them to their country of origin, so immigration is stuck with them. In those circumstances, immigration decides to um, let those people out on what's called a order of recognizance or an OR order, and they're given a notice to appear which actually initiates a removal process with the judge. As for what Jocelyn's mother hopes happens to the two suspects? That they receive worse than what my daughter did. Because she she deserves to live and breathe every single day. I was looking forward to seeing how beautiful she was going to grow up to be. Quanell, America is all familiar with the heartbreaking and horrifying story of Jocelyn Nungare, the 12-year-old child that a Houstonian uh, walked to a convenience store later in the night, snuck out of the house to talking on the phone with an age-appropriate boy, and she is kidnapped, raped, and murdered by two Venezuelan immigrants uh, that both entered this country illegally, were detained. I know at least one was given an ankle monitor that he cut off. I think both of them were, and then fled into these United States that and committed this horrifying crime where we've heard stories about an Ecuadorian on the run for murder coming here in this country commit more murder we had a little girl in Edna Texas get murdered 16 year old and of course the mainstream media is not getting a lot of focus or attention to the fact that we have been awash in crimes committed by illegal immigrants and yesteryear immigrants were far more well behaved in this country because they knew if they screwed up they would get deported now 2024 woke liberalism for not even liberalism, I consider myself pretty liberal. Far left evil progressivism is saying, oh, sanctuary everything. Oh no, if you commit crimes, well, we've got to worry about other things and other people and feelings. If you come to this country, I don't care if you come illegally or legally, and you commit a crime, it's time to send your butt back to whence you came from. And that needs to start right now. Charles, let me first start by saying that these two sick animals that did this to this beautiful young angel, this 12 year old beautiful young girl should be put to death and soon. We shouldn't take 10 years executing these two men. But what I don't want to see happen is lies be spread about the broader immigrant community because of the sick behavior of these two individuals. We're now gonna take a broad brush and paint all immigrants in that same vine, that's wrong. What we don't want to do is tell lies that immigrants are committing crimes to like they never did before. The majority community of immigrants, yes, they're here illegally and they should have came the right way and maybe they should be deported, but the overwhelming majority of them are law-abiding citizens because they don't want to be deported. So to take the behavior of these two and paint the whole immigrant community is wrong. Those two men who did this to Jocelyn should be put to death, but white folks did the same thing to black people. 
they would highlight the crimes of one black man or two black men here and paint us with that same broad brush yeah, uh, like we were all criminals. Quanell, you sound like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I didn't say all immigrants. I said, in fact, well, immigrants to used to, to be. No, I didn't try to say you anything. I used the words I used. No. And my words you are, use if you whistle. come here, you use no, if words. you come here and commit a crime, you should get sent out. I, I didn't say anything that. about the law abiding. And this you is your race baiting nonsense. Here. You oh, 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 I, I know you didn't. I know, you Charles, you didn't say this, but I'm going to call you a racist. No, Charles, you got more Americans than oh, the same whatever. crimes and immigrants. Well, as that debate raged on, the community showed up to support Jocelyn's family with a vigil.